The motive for the Easter Rising of 1916 is to be found in the Irish Republican Revolutionary tradition. The opportunity was provided by the First World War, which diverted British attention, and the means of carrying out an armed rebellion was provided by the Irish Volunteers, founded by Owen McNeill in November 1913 in response to the arming of the Ulster Volunteers and the threat of losing home rule. From 1915, an IRB military council was planning a rising. The military strategy of seizing landmark buildings in Dublin city was weak. Strategically important sites such as the telegraph office and major railway stations were omitted. This poor planning highlights the lack of military expertise among the rebels. The IRB needed a pretext to convince Owen McNeill, who was originally from Glenarm County Antrim, to allow the Irish volunteers to take part in the rising. They used the so-called Castle document, a forged document, but based on genuine British plans for extending conscription to Ireland, to convince MacNeill. Sir Roger Casement, a distinguished British diplomat who grew up in County Antrim, went to Germany to source guns for the Rising. Any serious chance of the Rising succeeding disappeared when Casement's shipment was intercepted off the coast of Kerry on Good Friday. Casement was arrested and the ship carrying the guns was scuttled. The arrest of Casement alerted MacNeill to the fact that he had been duped by the IRB and he cancelled the orders for the volunteers to mobilise on Easter Sunday. The rebels decided to proceed with the rebellion in spite of MacNeill's countermanding order. It was postponed by one day and began on Easter Monday, the 24th of April 1916. The Easter proclamation represents the manifesto of the rebels. It reflects the IRB's desire to use armed force to achieve an independent Irish Republic, as well as James Connolly's socialism and support for greater gender equality. It is notably addressed to Irish men and Irish women. The role of women, over 220 of whom were involved, is a striking feature of the Rising. Outside of Dublin City, the only serious areas of rebellious activity were in East Galway, and Esgorthy County Wexford and Ashburn County Meath. Volunteers and Common the Mon members from Ulster mustered at Coal Island in County Tyrone with plans to join up with the rebels in Galway, but were unable to do so. By the middle of Easter week, British military reinforcements had arrived. A contingent of newly arrived Sherwood foresters was ambushed at Mount Street Bridge by volunteers under the command of Eamon de Valera. Approximately 230 soldiers were either killed or wounded. It was for her role in tending to injured soldiers in this engagement that Louisa Nolan was awarded the military medal. The British gunboat the Helga shelled the centre of Dublin, and with much of the city in ruins and supplies of food and water and other essential commodities running out for the rebels, Patrick Pearce ordered an unconditional surrender on Easter Saturday the 29th of April. It is estimated that 485 people died during the six days of the Rising, over half of whom were civilians, including 40 children under the age of 17. 17 Irish policemen also died. The role of the Royal Irish Constabulary during the Rising was subsequently recognised by the award of the Constabulary Medal to a number of them, including Thomas Cahill. 78 rebels died including 16 leaders who were executed by the British authorities. These included the seven signatories of the proclamation and Roger Casement, who was hanged for treason. The harshness of the British reaction reflected anger at what was seen as treason in wartime. Judged solely as a military engagement, the Rising was a failure. The majority of Irish nationalist opinion still supported home rule and the rebels had no democratic mandate for their actions. Public opinion in Dublin was initially hostile as Dubliners surveyed the physical damage done to their city. Yet, within a year, Irish republicanism was resurgent and the Sinn Féin party was emerging as the most popular political force on the island outside of Ulster. This change in public opinion resulted largely from the harsh British response in executing the leaders and the continued failure to grant home rule. Unionists were appalled by the rising and it strengthened their resolve to exclude Ulster from any home rule settlement. The rising second train of movement that would result in the partition of Ireland and the granting in 1921 of a large measure of independence to the Irish Free State in the South and Home Rule to the six counties of Northern Ireland.